Good afternoon. You are looking at the standard of Ur. It's on display at the British Museum. It is a 4,500 year old artifact from ancient Sumer. Its purpose is still under debate but its message can still resonate with 21st century humanity. Now it's a wooden box covered in tar, inset with little pieces of red limestone, shell, and lapis lazuli. Here's a map of ancient Sumer, Mesopotamia, the land between the two rivers. And you can see the rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates, as they go through this very fertile land, then very fertile land. At the time, the Persian Gulf came up here so that Ur was close by the Persian Gulf. This is an aerial view of Ur, uh, taken some years ago, prior to the warfare that's occurred there. Interestingly enough, the ziggurat or artificial mountain upon which was situated a small temple to the god Nana, or, uh, the moon god, uh, this was restored under Saddam Hussein. It was meant to be a tourist attraction, and he was doing the same thing at Babylon, trying to restore ancient Babylon. The site was excavated by Leonard Woolley in the 1920s. This is a photograph of the excavation. This, I believe, this area right in here is the Royal Cemetery in which so many valuable artifacts were discovered. Re recall that this is all hand dug. No backhoes were involved. Um, it was a monumental task worthy of the ancient Sumerians. Here is a photo of Leonard Woolley uh, holding up a Stella uh, along with T.S. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, who was himself a classical archeologist. This photo shows Kathleen Woolley uh, who was a single woman, an archaeologist. She is, is said to have been second in command on the excavation. And she married Woolley as a convenience so that uh, uh, she, as a single woman, could remain with the excavation. In this photograph, you see Woolley once more with Agatha Christie and her husband. Uh, Agatha wrote a murder mystery called, I believe, Murder in Mesopotamia to go along with a couple of her other mysteries that were set in um, the archaeology of Egypt. This final photograph shows Woolley uh, carrying the recently excavated Queen's Lyre or hope, uh, Harp. Here it is restored, the Bull's Head Harp. Uh, you can see the gold, the lapis lazuli here, and it, the inset similar to the standard of Ur. Now, the standard has two sides. One depicts peace and the other war. And it's interesting to look at them in some detail. 
First of all, you'll notice in the upper register, there is this large authority figure. Could be a god, could be a king, could be the priest of the temple of Nana. It's hard to tell. In any event, uh, these seated figures obviously are members of the social elite of Ur, and they are being hosted by this authority figure or to honor this authority figure. They're being entertained by this harpist with a uh, bull's head harp. And they're being ser served by probably uh, house slaves of the palace or temple. The second register shows agricultural peasants bringing in their stock from the countryside. Uh, most of these animals probably would be used for sacrifice to the various gods that were honored by the priests and the social elite. And afterwards, of course, it fed them in um, uh, banquet style. And that does not include the peasants who represented 90% of the population then and did so throughout Western history until probably the 18th century. The third register shows peasants bringing in um, probably grain, dried dates, vegetables, uh, anything that was consumable by the urban elite. So what you have here clearly is a highly stratified society between the elite and the peasantry. And that's going to stay pretty much the same, as I already said, uh, at least throughout antiquity, through the end of the Roman Empire and beyond. Here is the war side of the standard of Ur. You can see the war band leader, probably the king or the military general or leader. Uh, he has his troops. They are in uniform. Uh, they have some prisoners here and here. We've got war chariots, four-wheeled war chariots that have uh, already conquered uh, some foes. But really what we have here is absolute documentation that 4,500 years ago in Iraq, there already existed state-sponsored institutionalized warfare. And that has been a plague on humanity for the last 4,500 years. So the standard of error, food for thought. Thanks for watching.